What is up guys, Rick Kakis here, and today we've got some brand spanking new Destiny 2 news, courtesy of the Bungie weekly update that has just been released, detailing a bunch of new official information. And this week was a doozy. Seriously, this is a huge weekly update. Bungie went in depth in talking about all of the changes coming very soon to the prestige difficulty Nightfall, including how the new scoring system would work and customizable modifiers and everything and rewards, and also talked about how the prestige raids are going to change, how there's going to be rotating modifiers and loadouts. Yes, I'm serious. So let's get started. Now, Firstly, before we jump into the weekly update news, there was earlier today an Activision investors call. Now, nothing too insane was divulged during this call, but Activision did say that two adventures await Destiny fans in 2018. And this essentially confirms that we're going to see two major DLCs coming in 2018. Now the one of course is DLC 2 coming in May, but this would indicate that there's going to likely be a big Taken King style of expansion coming in the fall. And that's really the only huge piece of info from that investor's call. So moving on from there, let's talk about the weekly update. First off, as previously mentioned, Nightfalls are getting a big overhaul. The time-based mechanics are being taken out completely and replaced with a scoring system, shown here. This Nightfall scoring system is driven in the following ways. Number one, scoring is team-based and the sum of individual performances. A team should be able to focus on what works best, not feeling put out by who stole whose kill. That's great. Secondly, scoring is primarily driven by kills and secondarily by orb generation. So expect masterwork weapons to be very, very good in the nightfalls. On top of that, score bleeds over time. So you do want to kill enemies. Again, score is primarily driven by kill, but you want to kill them efficiently and be able to move on to the next part of the strike. That's really the play in trying to get the best score possible. And that does make sense. That's a very Prison of Elders style of scoring system. But we also have the fact that scoring cuts off after time thresholds. At 15 minutes, new points earned are reduced by 50%. At 18 minutes, you stop earning new points and it's a race to finish the run and post your score. So that's pretty interesting as well. Again, it's about efficiency. It's not necessarily a pass or fail time limit like the old scoring system, but you still have to do the nightfall. But there is no technical time limit. Yes, you'll stop earning points past 18 minutes, but if you kill absolutely everything within 18 minutes, you could presumably still have enough score at 25 minutes to complete the nightfall challenges. Now, speaking of Nightfall challenges, Bungie is going to introduce something called Challenge Cards. These will allow you to select different modifiers, essentially, in your Nightfall run and increase the score modifier dependent on how many downgrades and handicaps you take on. For example, the card shown here has a handicap where if your entire fire team falls in a restricted zone where you can't respawn, everyone will be returned to orbit. The good old vanilla D1 Nightfall style. You can also see Solar Singe, which makes it so that solar damage increases slightly from all sources. By the way, it's a 25% increase, and of course there's Solar Singe, Arc Singe, and Void Singe. So it's almost like introducing burns back into the game. Certainly not as impactful, I believe burns were a two times damage bonus, but making it so that your solar weapons and abilities do more damage, and of course taking more incoming damage, is going to be a welcome addition to Nightfalls, I believe. But remember that challenges will only apply to prestige Nightfalls. Now of course, I'm sure a lot of you guys are watching the video and thinking, well that's great and all, but what are the rewards? What do you get for going to all this trouble? Well, Bungie does talk about that a little bit. Remember, the rewards are a stretch goal, so they may not come on February 27th with the rest of the strike scoring edition. They may be delayed to a later time. 
In any event, the rewards on offer are specialty emblems. Every single Nightfall will have its own unique emblem. The one shown here obviously is for Inverted Spire and it's earnable when the Inverted Spire Strike is the featured Nightfall. Now these emblems will showcase your personal best score for that Nightfall and there'll be a community threshold that Bungie has stated that they will actually raise or lower depending on how well people are doing and if you go beyond that threshold, so the threshold here is 30,000, this person scored 45,000, then you're going to get an aura for the rest of the week. But there's a little bit more than that. The aura isn't just for show. If you go over the threshold and you have that aura, you're going to boost Vanguard token drops for your entire team by 25%. So if you're running strikes and everyone's getting more tokens, they know that the guy with the aura is the guy to thank. And that's actually pretty cool. I wonder if it stacks as well. So that's kind of a lot to digest and there's certainly some big changes coming to Nightfalls. And frankly, I think most of these changes are great. I think the scoring system is superior to the timing system because just running past most of the strike for the Nightfall was frankly boring. And I do like how the emblems can show off your score. The hardcore PVE players are gonna love that people looking at them and saying, how the heck did this guy get 60,000? I only got, you know, 25,000 or something like that. That's all great news. But we need to address the elephant in the room. When the roadmap first came out and said Nightfall exclusive rewards, pretty much everyone was like, thank goodness, um, Strike exclusive loot is coming back, but it's available through Nightfalls. Everyone was hyped for that. And I think even though these emblems are cool and a great idea, if there's no actual tangible weapons applied to these Nightfalls, it's gonna kind of blow over. I think most people want actual special weapons. Every time you beat the Inverted Spire, you have a chance to get the Inverted Spire legendary weapon or even legendary armor piece, just like in Destiny 1 with the Strike Exclusive loot there. I think Bungie, you're gonna have to do the old two for one. You're gonna have to do both. Give people new meaningful weapons to go after, which is what most people want, and then have these emblems that the really hardcore players can show off and help their entire team actually. But moving on from there, like I said at the beginning of the video, raids are also getting a dramatic overhaul. Now I'm sure a lot of you guys have been wondering where the heck is the prestige Eater of Worlds raid lair? And why is it being delayed all the way until May with the release of Expansion 2? Well, Bungie addresses that and says it's because they are overhauling how the prestige raids work. So starting with the release of the next expansion, Expansion 2 again in May. However, Bungie does say this is a stretch goal. It may be delayed past that point, but hopefully it comes out in May. There's going to be a rotating special prestige raid. So every single week, a different raid or raid layer will be the featured playlist essentially for this special raid. Very similar to how the Age of Triumph worked in Destiny 1 where one raid was featured and had all of the challenge modes active. So every single week one of these randomly selected raids will have a certain modifier and a required loadout. Here is an example. This isn't actually going to be confirmed to be happening for week one, but this is an example of something we may see for week one. So the raid activity would be the Eater of Worlds raid layer. The modifier would be Marksman. Precision damage is increased. Landing a precision shot grants one ammo directly into the magazine. And the required loadout is that you have to be using a hand cannon in your kinetic slot. You have to be using an energy scout rifle and you have to be using a linear fusion rifle for your power weapon. That is freaking sweet. That is absolutely awesome. And that's something I never expected to be reading. An actual required loadout with a special modifier. Well, let's go to week number two. Again, this is just an example. So that might be the expansion to raid layer. The modifier is gladiator. Your melee damage is increased and melee kills grant bonus super energy. The required loadout is for the kinetic sidearm energy submachine gun and power shotgun. And then let's move on to the week three example. The raid activity is again eater of worlds. The modifier is conduit. 
Each kill you get before reloading or swapping weapons gives you increasingly more ability energy. For your kinetic, you have to have an auto rifle, energy, you have to have the risk runner, that's actually really sweet, and then power the grenade launcher. So again, that is really, really gonna change how raids work week to week, completely changing your loadout. Like I don't think I would ever use a kinetic sidearm for my raid loadout, but if I have to, that's gonna be actually pretty sweet. And I'm just thinking like as a content creator, I think this would be super fun to make videos of, like go in, try to do the raid obviously, and have like recommended loadouts for what you could use for kinetic sidearms, for example, all of that stuff. That is sweet, I'm so looking forward to this, but, there's a big but. And it's the same but that we talked about with the new prestige nightfall changes. If there's no loot to chase, if there's no rewards to go after, who cares about all these changes? The prestige difficulty Leviathan Raid actually was a really interesting encounter. Every single one of its encounters was changed, was made more difficult, more engaging, but because the rewards were all cosmetic, no one gave a crap. And therefore, people just left the game in droves. There needs to be actual raid loot tied to these special modified raids or else no one's gonna care Bungie. You can't do half of the job, which is making an interesting encounter. You have to have the other half, which is loot to chase. Bungie does say that these will give special raid loot, but we don't know what loot and hopefully it's not just cosmetic. If Bungie does have special raid loot that you can only get for doing these special prestige difficulty versions of the raids, Oh my goodness, that is gonna be so fun. Every week, PvE players are gonna have something different and something fun to do. It's gonna be a great addition. But again, Bungie, you can't just do half. You gotta do both. And so guys, there you have it. Two big changes coming to Destiny 2 rather soon. Again, these changes seem really fun, really great additions. Hopefully they have desirable loot tied to them. That's my only worry about all of this stuff. Guys, that's it for the video. I hope you enjoyed and found this informative. If you did, please remember to help me out by simply rating and especially sharing this video. If you guys want to see more Destiny 2 content similar to this, don't be afraid to slap that subscribe button. And if you guys want to get in touch with me and keep up to date with the latest channel activity, the best way is to follow me on Twitter. That's linked in the description down below, as is my Twitch channel, which you can also follow. Again, I hope you enjoyed the video, and as always, have a good day.